How celebrities lie to you about not having plastic surgery or Botox or liposuction while technically not lying, but having procedures that mimic the look that plastic surgery can bring. There are some very fancy tricks that celebrities have up their sleeves to deny cosmetic procedures. And this video comes with a gigantic disclaimer that number one, this is not against any particular celebrity. I am going to be using photos of celebrities in this video, including photos of myself, because they are public figures and we can use this as a topic of discussion and education, but this is not a personal attack on any celebrity or influencer. Number two, I want to acknowledge the fact that it can be extraordinarily traumatizing to be in the public eye all the time and to be compared to your sisters or to be compared to other celebrities or to be constantly ridiculed for the way you look. And third, a little disclaimer on body dysmorphic disorder. There are certain psychosocial or psychiatric conditions such as body dysmorphic disorder that cause people to seek out plastic surgeries, injections, ways to transform their body, exercise, etc. that goes uh, beyond what is reasonable and it is considered a disorder because it causes disorder uh, in their lives. And I do want to kind of put this out there because often people who struggle with BDD have comorbidities such as depression and anxiety, and they are often kind of these serial plastic surgery seekers or serial filler seekers. And unfortunately, there are some dermatologists, plastic surgeons, and practitioners that don't see that. And instead of referring to a psychologist or a psychiatrist to get this patient help, they take the money and do the filler, the injection of the surgery anyways, which causes someone to just look disproportionate. Um, and it's not fixing the actual issue underhand. So there are links in the bottom description and the bottom tab if you think that you are struggling with body dysmorphia disorder, and just a couple of help references. But that disclaimer out of the way, let's talk about how a celebrity can technically say, I've never had Botox, but they have had the same neurotoxin injected into the muscles of their face to stop them from being able to have muscle contractions and cause wrinkling in their forehead or these little crow's feet or, you know, anywhere in this facial area. Let's talk about how a celebrity can technically say, I have never had liposuction, but they can use a fat dissolving technique like Kybella here in the submental or underneath the chin area. They could have cool sculpting that is done on the body so that they could say they've never had liposuction. And it appears as if their body looks different, which would not be attainable for them if it weren't for these procedures. Let's talk about nose jobs and how a celebrity could technically say, I have never had a nose job, but they have had injections or a liquid nose job that causes their nose to look smoother. Um, and it took 15 minutes instead of a month of downtime and going actually under the knife for surgery. And I've seen this a lot in the influencer world as well. And that's why I want to bring it up because I noticed that patients, as well as people here on this YouTube channel, come to me concerned about these things. And they are comparing their reflection to someone else's retouch. And they are feeling the need to conform to this. And I want to spark the conversation about discussing these different things, uh, insecurities when it comes to how we compare ourselves to celebrities and kind of knowing what's happening behind the scenes. And then also just helping you understand what your options are, because if you want to go get a surgery or a non-invasive option, it should be for you, not for society or not because celebrities think it's cool. Right here is a photo that I found on Reddit and I don't know any of these people, <laughs> but these are all different people. And yet, do you see how they all look extraordinarily similar? They are gorgeous, objectively and without a doubt. Yet simultaneously, they all have this very standardized look. They have this kind of fox eye lifted, maybe that is thread lifts, could be, you know, surgery. They have this tight contoured and very straight nose. They have these luscious lips and some defined jawlines and contours here. And a lot of this is makeup as well. Look at Kylie Jenner with all of her plastic surgery and non-invasive options without makeup. That still doesn't look like what she looks like with makeup on, right? Simultaneously, this is a look and a trend right now. What is this going to look like in 10 or 15 years? Do you remember the Baywatch babe, the blonde hair, large breasts, this kind of look that happened? We kind of look at that as an era because that blonde haired, large breasted woman kind of defines that era in plastic surgery. Is this Instagram face going to define the 2010s and 2020s of our generation in the next 50 years? Think about that. This entire conversation started because I was speaking with a few derms and plastic surgeons about it, and then I opened my fat mouth on Instagram and I decided to talk about it and put a poll there and ask people if they wanted more information, and a lot of people hit the yes button. And you know that I am a genie in a bottle, so your wish is my command, and here we are. 
And because I've been on the clinical side of this or because I see what's actually happening, I do feel it is important to discuss. And again, if you or if someone else does not want to speak about the fact that you've had a plastic surgery or a non-invasive or non-surgical option, you have every right not to share that. You shouldn't have to share that. And this is not me telling people or influencers that they have to. But I do want to use celebrities as an example to explain why specifically when this comes into skincare lines and marketing and advertising, it can be deceptive. And you know, if you are interested in this kind of stuff, I want you to know what your options are. I just, I want there to be a little bit more authenticity around this topic. Even Dermangelo was on Instagram making a statement about how just because someone has good skin doesn't mean that they are credentialed or qualified to start a skincare line. You know, a lot of these celebrities are coming out with all of these skincare lines because it is trendy. And again, if they are working with great cosmetic chemists and dermatologists, then that is awesome. Go for it. But don't look at a celebrity and think that it's their skincare line with this freaking olive oil that did that to them when maybe they've never had Botox, but maybe they were lying about different procedures or they have access to medical microneedling. They have access to thread lifts and to all of these things that we don't see. So let's start there. Let's start with thread lifts. Um, we all know about a facelift. This is the surgical procedure where the skin is brought up to help with wrinkles, with sagginess, and to recontour the skin. But there are also thread lifts. These are much less invasive, and these are actually kind of barbed threads, or sometimes non-barbed threads, that are actually injected into the face, and they can actually literally lift the face up, kind of creating this lifted eye look or a facelift look without ever having to have a facelift. And if a celebrity is sitting on stage and saying, no, I've never had a facelift, this is just my natural face. I mean, what is natural? It is your natural face, but something has been done there. And again, if you don't wanna talk about it, that is your prerogative. But if a celebrity is selling some sort of a product, if they are selling some sort of an advertisement, if they are using this face and these procedures to sell a lie to other people, then that becomes a problem. And even outside of thread lifts, let's talk about Botox. Botox is a brand name. It's made by Allergan. It's botulinum toxin, but there are other brands that sell this exact same neurotoxin that can temporarily and mildly paralyze muscles so that you cannot move your face and therefore you don't get wrinkles. There are static wrinkles and dynamic wrinkles. And the more we use our facial features, the more we smile, we laugh, we emote, we get surprised, the more we are stretching and moving the skin. And if you're doing that over a lifetime, yes, those wrinkles can set in, especially if you are exposed to the sun, damaging UV rays, and other things that cause collagen and elastin degradation. And again, call me untraditional. I kind of think that's great. I think it's wonderful to show that we've smiled, we've had a few sleepless nights, we've worked hard, we've lived, we've loved, and we laughed. However, there are some celebrities who don't want that, and they are getting these injections, but they're not technically the brand name Botox. Maybe they're Dysport, right? They're another form of this botulinum toxin, which, fun fact, is actually created by a bacteria. It's the purified toxin from the Clostridium bacteria. It's just under a different name, and you can get away with saying that. That's the other funny thing. This is a toxin. It is a neurotoxin that people are willingly injecting into the muscles of their face to cause this weakness, right? This botulinum toxin can do great things. Yet, simultaneously, a lot of these exact same people will go over and buy this all-natural, completely toxin-free skincare. It's like, okay, so your skincare is toxin-free, which, by the way, just means it's, like, venom-free, right? But you literally injected a toxin into your face to make sure that you don't have wrinkles? Like, come on, like, do you see what I'm saying about all of these marketing claims and these celebrity experiences? Okay, I get a little bit heated. But whether it's Dysport, whether it's Botox, whether it's another brand, you can have botulinum toxin injected into your face, and this can help with weakening the muscles and preventing wrinkles from setting in. Simultaneously, I do want to make it clear that there are reasons that are non-cosmetic that someone might get Botox, specifically when it comes to headaches and other muscle issues. I don't think that that should be discredited. And again, if you've had Botox or if someone else has or any other neurotoxin injected and they don't want to talk about it, they should not have to. They should just not be selling products saying that this is how their skin got so amazing um, when it is not due to that product or that service it was due to something else with a little behind the scenes. Let's also talk about liposuction or tummy tucks. Tummy tucks are wonderful for those who need them when they're done right by a board certified plastic surgeon in combination with dermatologists, etc., to care for that scarring. Um, liposuction as well can literally suck the fat out of the body um, and can help to recontour. But there are some celebrities and yes, some influencers who say, I've never had liposuction. But then it's like, okay, well then how did you get your body from going from one shape to a completely different shape? Can you please explain that? 
that. Even when it comes to the face, yes, liposuction can be done in the face, specifically for fat in this area, but there are also injections that we can do that kind of, you know, work away at fat uh, that technically are not liposuction. So technically, the celebrity or influencer didn't lie to you, um, but that's super deceptive because they used something else. Technically, uh, bile acid or purified synthetic form of bile acid, by the way. <laughs> specifically, when it comes to the face, Kybella is very popular. It is quite effective. They've done clinical trials and studies and then anecdotally with patients, we've seen a lot of great results. Um, it's injected here underneath the chin and it can help with that double chin. But also, let me show you something else that helps with the double chin. I filmed an entire video on the modeling industry about this, but ready? Here's my chin. Watch what happens as a model when I do a little something to my face. Awkward noises, awkward noises. This awkward is a really awkward silence. You can hear me digesting. So here's a voiceover song instead. Do you see how just by moving my tongue, I can make this entire area look different. When I just clench my jaw, I can make my entire face look different. There is a video right here on modeling tips that if you haven't seen this, this is like something I filmed like four or five years ago. One of the videos that like exposes celebrity and modeling secrets that most people don't know. And if you haven't clicked on this, ask yourself why. Open it in a new tab and then thank me later because I'm exposing what happens in magazines and on film and in the industry. Anyways, outside of just changing your facial shape, yes, you can get these injections and you can actually dissolve some of this fat and that can make it look as if this is lifted. And again, thread lifts um, could help a little bit depending on where exactly the sagging is happening. But now let's not forget to talk about the body. Liposuction is really effective, especially when combined with radio frequency. However, there are non-surgical and non-invasive options such as cool sculpting. Cool sculpting can get rid of fat on the body, and although you need multiple treatments, you know, you don't need liposuction. You technically have never gone under the knife. Same with other forms of radio frequency on the body. It can kind of be used, it's normally used in combination with liposuction, but there are things that can be done uh, that technically, no, are not surgery. And, you know, to see someone who has like, you know, this amazing body and to compare ourselves to them and think that we've never had anything done, it's deceptive. Especially if someone is trying to sell weight loss pills, detox diet, diarrhea teas, weight loss shakes, fitness books, fitness wear, swimwear, yoga wear, whatever. It's your body. Do with it what you want, just disclose that if you are trying to advertise, you know, using some of these procedures. I'm looking at you, celebrities. And then let's talk about filters, filters, filters. There are so many filters. And in plastic surgery clinics, people used to bring in photos of celebrities and say, I want Reese Witherspoon's jaw, or I want this person's nose, I want Kim Kardashian's or Gigi Hadid's eyes. Now they're bringing in photos of themselves, filtered, saying, I want this blurred skin. I want my nose to look like this. And guess what? Newsflash, real skin has pores. Even if you're overdoing it with the fillers, even if you've got the pillow face, even if you're overdoing it with the medical microneedling and radio free frequency. You can get a glass skin look, but you're still going to have pores because that is the beautiful anatomy of your skin. And some people who see their filtered versions of themselves all the time, they get really insecure about that. And I think that that needs to be discussed. And we almost need courses on like reality and social media because the way we are consuming content is changing the way that we are defining beauty and therefore confidence within ourselves. Filters, filters, filters. Right here is me with and without an Instagram filter. This is literally me, no makeup, in all of my groggy morning glory. And just by slapping an Instagram filter on my face, my nose is snatched, my eye color can change, my lips are bigger. And this is emulating what we are seeing as a trend in plastic surgery or in non-invasive plastic surgery, as we've just discussed. There was a time, a few years ago that I was considering a move to Los Angeles and I was looking at my options. I was just kind of exploring, right? I was looking at different options in plastic surgery clinics and aesthetic medicine clinics. I was just kind of scoping out the waters because it was very interesting to me. People who worked at this plastic surgery clinic that said that I needed to do some injections or some fillers or have a little bit of a nose shave, you know, to look a little bit better and kind of like hold up the aesthetic of their office. And if that's the aesthetic that your office is, if that's what you want, 
that is fine. Um, but it was very unsettling to me to, you know, go in somewhere looking at different options of who I could work with or collaborate with, and then to be told that I needed to change my physical appearance by, you know, some of the people that worked there that I would be working alongside with. And that was really frustrating to me, especially because I've never questioned or doubted my nose. Uh, and it wasn't until I think 2010 or 11 when I got on YouTube, I used to watch uh, Juicy Star 07 and her sister All That Glitters 21, Ellen Blair Fowler. I loved them. And when I found out that they had gotten their nose job and their surgeries, I started to question if I needed that. And that is a prime example of a young girl who never had insecurities about my nose that thought that I needed to go do that because other people were. And there was a time in my life where I thought like, ooh, should I be doing this? Like, do I need to get this? Is this going to make me look prettier? And thank God, you know, I was struggling with acne at the time. I was extraordinarily insecure. I was a model who had just been told by an agency in Italy um, that was working with Calvin Klein that I was too fat to be on their runway, even though I was objectively underfed and like not looking my best and not looking or being my healthiest uh, from a like weight and nutrition perspective. Really bad, <laughs> really bad, okay? And it happens in all facets of the industry. But this was at that same time and I thought I needed a nose job. And thank goodness I didn't go forward with that because that would not have been for me. It would have been for society or for this influencer pressure. And full transparency, again, my business, what I have or haven't done to my body is nobody's business unless I'm selling products, but making it your business because I believe in authenticity and if we're talking about it, I'm willing to share. I've never had anything done to my face or my body. No injectables, no fillers, no plastic surgery, etc. That does not make me better or worse than anyone else. It is just my personal story, especially having access to it all the time, helping others with it, feeling the pressure of it, um, you know, by both the modeling industry and the aesthetic medical industry. It's really hard. And seeing yourself filtered, looking better and getting more likes when you're more filtered on social media, it has impacted me more than I'd like to admit. And I'm really happy that I have come to a place of confidence and like recognize these things that are happening. And I hope that I can speak about that and share, you know, my own story and kind of like lift the veil as to what's happening online and social media so that other young girls don't feel these same pressures. And if there's something I leave you with today, it's that please know these things can be tricky. It's no one's business to disclose it to you, even if we think that they should. And people will lie about it, or people will skirt the lexicon around, you know, if it's Botox or a different toxin uh, as to how they have gotten their faces or bodies to look the way they do. I want you to remember to never compare your reflection to someone else's retouch, because often these retouches are so good, we can't even tell the difference between filter and reality. I want you to remember that social media is a highlight reel, and you cannot compare someone else's perfectly polished scrapbook to your behind the scenes. Everyone's going through something, everyone's got their insecurities, and if you have something that you wanna change about yourself, know what your options are, know your reasoning behind it, and actually do it for you. Ask yourself, if no one ever saw my face, like if I got this done for me and only I could see it in the mirror and nobody else around me could see this, would it make me feel better? If so, then it's for you. And if not, really consider it. And if you were bullied or you were teased or you do have these insecurities, your insurance should cover that. If it's something that is causing a disorder in your life, such as a deviated septum or, you know, ears that are, you know, you're being teased about, that is a different realm. Body dysmorphic disorder is also a different realm. But for the majority of people, we should know about these things. We should have these conversations. And I think that there should be a little bit more authenticity in the online space. If you agree, make sure that, that like button is hit. Make sure that you've smashed subscribe. If you want to throw this up on Instagram, the entire reason that this video came about was because of an Instagram conversation. So feel free to tag me and post it in your stories if you feel that other people should see it as well. And at the very end of the day, always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. There's another video on celebrities and plastic surgery right here. Love you guys. Bye.